Hey guys, it's Box 90 here with a interesting video. I was kind of involved in a discussion regarding EDH stuff, and I thought it would be something to bring up at the same time I was thinking about a new idea. So I thought I'd bring them up at the same time together in one video and see what you guys think about everything. So I was having an EDH discussion which I love having, although this one was a little bit facetious and, in my opinion, a little bit ridiculous. It was in some video, I think it might have been an Aphromine video, and I was talking to a guy, and he was arguing, like I had said, oh wow, nice pull with your Birds of Paradise. I said, given our EDH connection, you know, it's a pretty decent card. And he was like, Birds of Paradise, like WTF, how could it possibly be good in EDH? And I responded that I believe that Birds of Paradise can be a very good EDH card. And he was like, you're crazy. And we argued about it for a while. And we kind of just ended the argument because we disagreed on the usefulness of Birds of Paradise and EDH. And so that whole EDH discussion leads to this new idea I have for new EDH. I don't know if I'm going to call it, I don't want to call it an extension, sub-series, mini-series, or just a group of videos, but I thought it'd be interesting if I could talk about cards in EDH and whether or not they're, you know, good, bad, my thoughts on how I'm using different cards. Because honestly, I hear a lot, and I myself have used it, that like a, the joke that a card in EDH oftentimes is bad in other formats. Or if you see a card that's like awful in standard, legacy, modern, well, it could be great in EDH, and that's like that's a joke because many cards do work that way. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily work the reverse. That if a card is really good in other formats, that it can't be good in EDH. And I thought maybe that I could discuss different cards and the strengths or weaknesses of a card in the EDH format. And I'd love if you guys would comment below and let me know what you guys think about that. Like, what cards would you want? to see like that you've seen in EDH or heard about or seen in standard legacy etc and been like can this be good in EDH it, why is it bad in EDH etc like just to talk about different different individual cards their strengths weaknesses and so on and I'll kind of tie into the video I'll give you an idea of what I'm what I'm thinking about doing I'll talk about the birds of paradise which is the argument so I don't want to keep make the video too long it's kind of just an introductory just random thought video but Birds of Paradise. Okay, so it's a one drop, which in and of itself in EDH immediately signals to you one thing. If you have a one drop creature, particularly, then there has to be something about it that's utility, that can be utilized to do something for you. So there aren't many one drops that you expect to win the game with. The point of them is that you land them on turn one, or you have a variety of one drops that you can land on turn one and be happy with the utility it gives you. So I'll kind of bring up the points the other guy was making in the argument, and I'll kind of deal with them. So the first thing he said is that, oh, okay, it's a one drop, but it's just a one for a zero one flying that adds a mana of any color to your mana pool. What about, like, oh, you draw a turn 15, like, what's, how could it possibly help you? Like, when people have huge creatures out and are going to be doing tons of damage or big spells, how can it help you? Okay, so first off, Birds of Paradise is a utility creature. Most utility creatures you draw off the top later game can be frustrating in that they don't always help you. This is one of the most difficult things in EDH. You need utility creatures that will help you throughout the game if you can, but even if they don't help you throughout the game, that if you top deck them, they're not useless. Which is why, I'll give an example, let's say Coiling, I think it's Coiling Oracle. It's two for a one one that you when it comes into play you look at the top card if it's a land it goes into play and if it's other card it goes into your hand. Okay, so if you draw him, so he, in the beginning of the game he drops pretty early and you flip up the card. If it's a land it gives you a land advantage and if it's a card it gives you card advantage. So there's nothing bad about it. Let's say you draw it late game. Now what happens? Okay, well you play it and you have to get a land to play, which is just nice to have a land to play, or you draw a card, which is never bad. So. That can that's a utility that's good at any time during the game. So for Birds of Paradise, you're like, okay, well, let's say I get it turn one. 
which is ideal, or the first five terms. How does it help you? Well, in a five-color deck, drawing Birds of Paradise any time is good, because not only does it give you a mana advantage, potentially, but it also gives you the option of controlling your filtering, controlling your colors, being able to choose. Let's say in turn five or six, you draw Birds of Paradise, and you play it. You don't have a certain color. Well, Birds of Paradise now gives you that option for that to have that color. So drawing Birds of Paradise in a five-color deck is fine pretty much any time. Drawing it in, in, in f well, f I don't know if there are really four colors, but three-color decks, it's kind of the same thing, potentially. Kind of the same thing. Two-color decks, less so because you don't need the one color, and in mono decks, it's not really a necessity, unless you're running a deck that needs to generate mana anyway, and in which case it's a ramp creature. So that was kind of the point, is that it can be useful later game. Now that is particularly true in 1 vs. 1. What about multiplayer? Well, multiplayer, okay, I definitely agree there. Multiplayer EDH, Birds of Paradise, is not the greatest card to choose unless you're running a 3-5 to five color deck. And even then, it's not necessarily the best card. So, multiplayer, it's a bit underwhelming. 1 vs. 1, it's great. Now, is it useful beginning of the game versus end of the game? Because he's, his claim is that it comes out and it's useless on turn 15. So I disagree, because it can block. It's flying and can block. It's an 0-1. Well, what about something with a trample, with this? Okay, many generals, in fact, most generals, do not have trample. And from personal experience, drawing a Birds of Paradise on turn 15, and you have a general that's flying you can't deal with, playing Birds of Paradise, I, of course, you have to be... It's a little bit facetious to say that, oh, well, it's going to save the game for you. But it's true. Having an 0-1 out, with flying, can act as a good blocker. Having the ability to generate a mana of any color is never bad. It can never be bad. So, ideally, your curve is built where you won't draw Birds of Paradise, or you won't be forced to draw because you'll have since it's a vining top, or you'll have you'll have a lot of draw engines. You won't have to worry about drawing birds as your single card off the top. But I mean, even if you drew it off the top, it's not a terrible card. So 1 vs 1 EDH, basically 1 vs 1 EDH, Birds of Paradise is great. In multiplayer, if you're running a 5 color deck, I would still recommend you consider it. Otherwise, you might want to look for something better for a multiplayer, because multiplayer, you're the breadth of the field, you need something that gives you more advantage than just ramp cards, because you have other better ramp cards for buy, mono, buy, and maybe even tricolor. So that's my discussion. Of course, I love Birds of Paradise. It's amazing in Standard and in other formats as well. Modern, Legacy, depends, but maybe not Legacy as much, but it's a great card. And in EDH, that's kind of where, that's kind of how I view Birds of Paradise and my thoughts on it. Okay, so that's pretty much my, that, like, that would be the discussion of a card. I try to make it a little shorter. This is kind of introductory. I'm still getting my thoughts together about how to present these cards, but I think that kind of gives you an idea of both Birds of Paradise as an EDH utility. And of course, people can disagree with me. You can disagree with me down below in the comments. Totally fine. Th those are my thoughts. Please, as I said before, leave comments about other cards that you want to see that you're like, is this good in EDH? How can I use it in EDH? In what sort of EDH does it function best? One versus one, which is usually more competitive, um, but not necessarily Com competitive pro play there's no pro play it's a casual format but you, you understand what i mean pro-ish play versus more casual and how to best tweak your decks with any given card so you can leave those comments below and hopefully i'll sort through and pick out different cards that i also am interested in talking about and thinking about so hope you guys liked the video let me know your thoughts on everything below in the comments and in pms as usual rocksbox90 here signing out